Roger, is being an entrepreneur something we're born with, or is it something that we learn over time? Behind the Brand features the people who are making things happen. Get the insight to grow your biz from experts who've done it. Get Behind the Brand. I have a, uh, I have a real uh, belief that every one of us can be an entrepreneur, but I think a large part of this is really just our definition of what it is to be an entrepreneur. So as an example, like, you know, a lot of people think an entrepreneur is someone who just knows how to start something new and take big risks, and so they might not even think of someone like Warren Buffett as entrepreneurial. They'll think of he's more like an investor. Um, so it's about definition, and my definition of entrepreneur really goes back to the roots, because the word entrepreneur comes from the French word entrepreneur, which means to undertake, or to go on a journey of promise, uh, like go on a quest. You know, and, and that's where we get entrepreneur, which is enterprise, like USS Enterprise, like you know, Star Trek, you know, boldly going where no man's gone before. And, and from that point of view, the moment someone says, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on a journey, I'm gonna go out there and do more than just simply kind of like take what life gives me, yeah. um, then I see that as being an entrepreneurial journey. And some people will do that, uh, like, a, uh, like a, a Jack Welsh or a Steve Walmer, and they didn't ever start a business up. They worked with someone that actually started the business up. Uh, whether it's General Electric, whether it's Microsoft, they're still entrepreneurial because they're actually driving their own destiny. Right. And I really believe that every single person out there can be entrepreneurial. I don't think it's what's taught at schools, so I don't think that for most people they're even aware of that. But if someone says, you know what, I want to go out and actually start defining my destiny, there is an entrepreneurial spirit you need to actually do that. Which, and the way I would define that is the way that academics learn is that you need to know in order to do. The way that entrepreneurs learn is you need to do in order to know, which is, means it's all about actually saying, I'm going to get out there and I don't need to know all the answers, but I'm going to be learning as I'm going. And I'm going to get around other people in an environment where I have that kind of a mindset. Not being afraid to fail. Not being afraid to fail, but knowing the difference of failures that steer you and failures that sink you. Yeah. Because yeah, I think that's like going to the gym and knowing that failures that steer you is when you kind of like work out just beyond what you can do so that you stress the muscle, you let it fail, and then from there you get stronger, as opposed to going in and lifting a weight which is way too heavy, doing an injury, and then you're out of the game. Yeah. And I think a lot of people jump into a business uh, and, and, they, and they start with a financial injury that, that is so painful that they then kind of like shy away from even moving forward. So I think knowing that you have to take failures that steer you and maximize them, and you have to take failures that, that sink you, uh, be aware when they're showing up, and just avoid them altogether. So I'm sure there's a lot of people out there with great intentions. They've got these brilliant ideas that they want to execute. What do you think are some of the obstacles that we put in our own way? Mm. I, I think it's really interesting because for most of us, we're not even aware of what those obstacles are. Um, every one of the levels has got excuses. And we're not even aware they're excuses. We just see them as like reality. So for example, someone who's at what I call yellow level, which means that they're self-employed doing their own thing, or they might even have quite a big business, but it still relies on them being there. Uh, they'll tend to always have the same three excuses, which will be, number one, I can't find people as good as me. So they've read all the books that tell them they need other people, but they can't find that. And that's an excuse because someone at the green level would redesign the business so it's not centered around that person, and there's always a way to do that. The second excuse that they're always giving is, look, even if I could find people as good as me, I can't afford them because they have this assumption that they're actually at a much higher uh, uh, cost as opposed to realizing there's ways they can actually restructure their business so that there's actually a margin in there for the leadership. Uh, and that really is something that most people haven't thought through in a way that lets them get out of their business. And the third one is they say, well, even if I could find people and I can afford them, truth is I don't have the time to be able to go out there and train them or even find them or recruit them in the first place. Uh, and that also is all about how you're managing your own time. And once you actually realize, oh my gosh, these are just excuses. I've got to get over those. And then you actually say, well, then what would I do that would make those suddenly become false assumptions? Mm -hmm. And what you'll find is that you can switch that within a day or within an hour. And then within three months, you could be totally out of having to do all the things that you think you're trapped into in your, in your business or in your job. Can you give us an example? You've worked probably with a lot of businesses and a lot of entrepreneurs. Can you give us a case study or two of something that's uh, of what you just talked about? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I'll give you an example, right? This is an example of uh, a woman who was an uh, entrepreneur in uh, Eastern Europe, and her name is Bea Benkova. Uh, and she, when I met her, was in London, and she had a training company, she was supporting women. And when we really got down to what was her big challenge, she said the biggest challenge was, I'm in the middle of it all myself. People want to come and see me. I don't know how to get out of that. And when she went through the test, it turned out she was a blaze. 
uh, uh, Blaze Genius, which means she's great with people. She was spending all her time trying to put online marketing together. And I was like, that's ridiculous. Why are you doing all of that? It makes yeah. no sense for who you are. What you need to do is focus on your genius, create the income that you want for this coming year, build the, the plan in terms of what you can be doing within a year of now, which doesn't require your time anymore. And so the first thing that we did was we figured out how much you wanted to earn, which was about 100,000 euros. We worked out that through magnifying as opposed to multiplying, instead of her going out and trying to sell some kind of online product, she could go to 10 people she knew, uh, who she already could just phone up and say, would you want to be part of this new venture that I'm putting together and be part of a mastermind group that's going to be in this as our first examples, and at the same time where everyone's putting money in that's going to contribute to this? And they, all, they all said yes, and she ended up basically making her full one year uh, $100,000 she wanted within two weeks. So it was just a whole different way of thinking, yeah. which was what's natural for her. And then what she did was she set up her real dream, which was something called the Global Institute for Extraordinary Women. And the Global Institute creates certification programs which don't rely on her anymore. So she's there now shining a light on the Institute as opposed to people coming to her for her service. She's now got a whole faculty and a team of people where people are coming for their service. Yeah. So she's used her creativity, but she's now done it in a way that's allowed her to totally get out of the day-to-day at the same time that she got to the revenue she was looking for much faster by using her genius and then knowing what the steps were to build a culture, uh, to build a rhythm that's allowed her to step out of her business. Awesome. Let's talk about content for a minute. So social platforms, I mean, we're sort of seeing this evolution, right? We, see, we saw the revolution when social mm -hmm. media sort of blew up um, a few years ago and now it's sort of being integrated and more seamless and it's sort of coming back around to digital, which we all kind of knew as digital in the beginning. So do you think now is a great time or the worst time to start sort of a content strategy? We look at doing the opposite, and this is just from learning, testing and measuring out in Asia. Uh, and what I mean by the opposite is I see the opposite of content creation being engagement, which is not you creating the content, it's about your customers creating the content. This is how Facebook works, you know, it's like how Amazon works, it's like other, you know, the customers are the ones putting the reviews in, uh, it's the authors are the ones putting their own information in. And there's a huge difference that happens when you're in a situation where you're just churning out content which leads to lower engagement. You know, you find that over time less and less people are actually opening your emails or, um, you know, or, 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 or choosing what they're looking for where they're trying to sift through all the noise. Yeah. And we all know there's way too much content out there already. Yeah. So it doesn't mean the content isn't valuable, but when the customer is the one that's actually creating the content or you're supporting them to do that, then the engagement is much, much higher. So, so let's maybe break it down a little bit. So you, know, you have email and you have social media. Um, what are some of the platforms that you recommend for some of the people who have got their own businesses and they're worried about this? Yeah, so uh, well, the first thing is understanding that whether or not you're using any of the social media platforms like Facebook or LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, there's a big difference of doing it in a way where you're just, just turning out the content as opposed to actually creating engagement where people are getting involved in you, right? So I'll give you two examples of what I mean by that. One is we created a Facebook app which is called the Genius Test, which is part of, it's a free part of the book. And when we created that app, uh, what we were looking to measure was first of all, how many people were using it? So we weren't out there emailing people to try and get them to use it. Yeah. We were just recommending it as something which allows you to get an experience about yourself. Yeah, it's free, uh, it, was it free. took away all the friction. That's right, yep. but people would still give us their email addresses by doing it, and then they'd have an opportunity when they came to it, you'd have the pop-up saying, would you like to find out what the genius is of your friends? And then we'd be measuring how many of them actually invited their friends. And one in four people invited all their friends. And so what happened was we went from zero to over a thousand people a day giving us their email addresses, being involved in this, and then we then were giving them more information related to their genius, which then con has continued to see it grow. Uh, and that's, a very, that's an engagement strategy. Yeah. Where it's not us creating lots of content, it's us allowing everyone to get involved, uh, and then for them to have experiences about themselves they're then sharing with others. Yeah. Um, I'll give you a second example. We have our resort in Bali, and the resort is an entrepreneur resort. Uh, and we have done very little marketing for the resort, but we're pretty full all the way through the year. People come for like 30 days at a time. Um, and the way that we actually got people involved in it was we ran a number of scholarships. You know, we'd go out and we'd say, hey, we've got a scholarship program. Do you want to come to Bali for 30 days? Uh, what happened was when people saw that, they naturally shared it with others that they thought would, be, would find this valuable. Sure. Much more even than uh, coming to a, uh, 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 to a piece where they're reading a content. The most important uh, part of this was in order to actually even become part, uh, qualify for the scholarship, you had to actually write why you wanted it. Off the back of that, 
Of course, one person won the scholarship, there would be some second prizes, runners up, but now we had a very engaged group of people that we could contact and say, hey, you weren't one of the ones who won, but we'd love you to come on board. And our, when we actually spoke to people and said, would you like to now come, uh, we found that there was about 30 to 40% of all of them were already convinced they wanted to be part of this. So there's no sales job to be done. Yeah. It was just a matter of actually figuring out what was the best time for them to come for the event. Awesome. Uh, so this show has a, a great YouTube following. We love YouTube and our YouTube community. And I'm seeing more and more of your stuff on YouTube. So it's a bit of a shift for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Talk about why you're using YouTube, how are you using it, and the success that you're seeing. Uh, we went through uh, a phase where pretty much everything we were doing wasn't on video. You know, we were running workshops in different countries. We have um, practitioners and consultants who use our tools. Uh, and the way we design those uh, assessment tools, where really, whether it's the Wealth Dynamics Assessment Tool for entrepreneurs, or whether it's Million Master Plan Assessment Tool, we always looked at it a little bit like Intel Inside. It was like, here's a tool that you can use in your own business. So we spent most of our time supporting those partners, and that's really how things have grown over the last 10 years. Sure. What we noticed, first of all, about five years ago, was more and more people from different countries were coming to our site and really weren't able to access our tests. So we went through a first phase which really doubled the size of our business, where we actually translated everything we did into Japanese, into Chinese, into different languages, and we now have more people in different countries and different languages using our tools than even English. Um, what we then noticed was obviously the whole shift to mobile, where that goes hand in hand with video, because yeah. of course everyone wants to watch uh, video on mobile much more than just kind of like scrolling through pages. And so the second thing was we found that when we launched our um, online uh, app and our Genius U, uh, learning platform, people were watching the videos much more than they were reading through all that information. And we said, okay, it's time for us to now start you know, creating more of a channel and more of a dialogue conversation uh, than it is about basically just giving people a way to you know, get to the, uh, the information through text. So what that's meant is when I, about six weeks ago, uh, knew that I was coming out to America for the launch of the book, uh, I started from scratch my uh, YouTube channel. And this was like just a weekly post to say, hey, here's something I'm doing and here's yeah. a piece of information I think It's a self-cam, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, really, it's really basic. What are you using for your camera, for example? I'm just using an iPhone, yeah. right? but I'm, I'm deliberately really making it um, just like not too polished yeah. uh, because I want people to be able to engage with it. And I actually only decided to do it for six weeks. I thought I'm just going to do it through uh, and just give people who didn't know me a chance to just kind of see what I was up to right now today. Did it as a test. I did it as a test. Yeah. But what happened was just this week, in fact, um, I did my sixth one because I'm about to head back to Bali uh, and I actually asked uh, those who were watching it, you know, well, what do you think, should I continue it? Because what had happened during this time is we were seeing on a, we, we started with very small numbers, only, you know, three or four hundred even knew it was there, uh, but then it went up to 600, then it went up to 800, then it went up to 1,200, then 1,800, and it's, it's, it's just kept on growing every single week yeah. uh, to the extent that that extrapolation would mean that, you know, it would have 10, 20,000 people watching each one. Um, on a weekly basis where, where there's a conversation and a dialogue. So I asked them, would you like me to continue? And I've got really great feedback from it. So I'll continue the experiment and just see how that goes. But the other part is we definitely, from like how you work with video and how you actually build it together with articles, I think it's awesome. And I think it is really about that mixed media that people want to do what works best for them. And everyone has a natural way they absorb information, yeah. which is becoming more and more fluid as uh, we, our attention span becomes even less and less. So I'm curious too, like how are you getting the word out? So you probably have a really great solid email list. Mm. Are you emailing out the video saying, hey, there's a new video up, or you've probably got some sort of social presence. You mentioned Facebook already, maybe Twitter. How else are you getting the word out? Yeah, well, uh, a large part of everything that we have done has been through our partners. You know, so, so when it comes to basically uh, the number of people we have who are using our tools within their businesses, We've got somewhere in the region of about three to 4,000 companies around the world every day who are using these tools at the moment, and we have about a quarter of a million people who are using them. Um, we don't want to be out there going crazy in terms of like you know mass emailing everybody, um, but the ones who have actually subscribed in to our, uh, um, to our monthly newsletters and so yeah. on, we have let them know. Yeah, they raise their hand and say, I want this. Yeah. And we'll let them know that we have the channel and so on, but it's much more organic. We're letting people find it as they go, uh, and we're not, and, and I think that's important because some other people have found other ways they already are using our information without us saying, hey, you have to go and look at the channel now. Yeah. They'll find it if it's right for them. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, talking to the camera for just a minute, as if you're talking to you know, a freshman in college, and give her some 
of your best business advice, you know, what to do, sort of, you know, the direction to take, the path to take, uh, and what she might do to, you know, be successful in business. Mm. Get personal for just a second. Mm. Talk right over my shoulder, right into the camera, right sure. here. Okay. So the number one thing is environment and community. It's like, it's not about trying to change from the inside out. It's actually changing from the outside in. It's being in that space where just by being in it, you can't help but succeed because everyone around you already is not only just giving you the encouragement, the advice, but also the resources, also the support that you actually need because no one can do it on their own. And then the second thing is to don't follow every piece of advice that's out there, no matter how much there's an expert telling you that's how they did it because we each have a natural path. So know who you are. Be really clear that you're starting from where you are and that the two biggest things that are gonna help you in life that you never want to ever see diminished is your confidence, which is all about how much you trust yourself, and your credibility, which is how much other people trust you. And those two things are things that you can build on a day-to-day -day basis by being around the right people, knowing who you are, and knowing that you're taking the right step that's appropriate for you. That's awesome advice. So I have two follow-up questions to that. So number one is, how do you find those people that you ought to be around, mm. right? How do you find those people that you ought to be around? Yeah. And secondly, how do you figure out what you're good at? Right, okay, great. You know, th these are the two big things that I spent my life trying to make easier in such a way that I thought if I was back 19 years old, what would it have been that would have helped me the most at that time? And on the first one, which is how do I find the people, this is, a lot, this is the reason we put so much effort into our Genius U platform, where when you come onto that platform, no matter which country you're in, it doesn't matter what level you're at, you're immediately directly connecting with other people that speak the same language. You know, they, they already understand the different geniuses. They understand the different levels. They're already supporting each other. So the first thing is knowing that there's platforms that are being created at the moment, which isn't just like wide open social where you, you join LinkedIn or you join Facebook and then you're not even sure who you should be working with. This is about actually having one where there's a language that everyone's already working with. So you've created your own social platform. So we create a social mobile platform, video platform, but when you're running what you call the missions as opposed to a course, when you're doing a mission which is how to get out of debt, a mission how do you start your first company, a mission on how do you actually build the right team, each of these are missions where you're actually in a community of others who've gone through that mission and got great results and they're sharing that information as well. But outside of what we do, there's now in pretty much every city around the world, incubators, co-working spaces, which didn't exist five, 10 years ago. And that allows you to just show up and be around others that already are like-minded and already are carving their own journey. Or there's networking groups. You know, for example, in Bali, we're part of Google for Entrepreneurs, something called Startup Grind, which are meetup groups all over the world. Uh, and that is, again, something you can go to, very affordable, you know, $5, $10 to show up and actually meet amazing yeah. people. And all the content's free online. Yeah. So in terms of finding people, the good news is it's actually easier now than ever to actually get to the people out there who are doing the things that you're interested in. And the more you can look for people that are in your niche or the things that you're most passionate about, the more you're gonna find people wanting to help you as well. On the other side, like how do, how do you know about yourself? Well, you can do what I did, which was take the scenic route, trial and error, which then can take 10, 20 years before you finally figure it out. Um, or you can do more and more what's now showing up in the world, which is start to actually use the tools that are available. Everything that I focus at in terms of assessments, uh, how do you know yourself better? All of that is specifically because until you know who you are and you know where you are, there's no way anyone can give you advice as to what's the next step to take. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're going away from one size fits all. A one size fits all book, a one size fits all drug, a one size fits all education does not work anymore. Yeah. So it's all about getting personalized. And luckily, we're all living in an environment right now where there are people out there that are looking to personalize the pathway and the teaching in terms of how do you get a business going based on who you are? Um, how do you go about building a team based on who you are? And these are all the things that I'm most interested in. Uh, and that's why we actually created all these assessments and, and the book as well. So that's why this test is so important. It sort of give you a, a ground zero, a starting point. Yeah, it allows you to yeah. know what to say no to in order for you to say yes to the right thing. Yeah. Uh, because otherwise it's too easy to get conflicting advice on pretty much everything. Uh, and, and then you're actually losing the biggest thing which is your most precious asset which is your time. Your yeah. time gets spread out on way too many different things. Yeah. So when you were first getting started you were clearly at the end of your rope. You know, you had nowhere to go but up. Now you've had this incredible success all these years later. Is it easier today to start something new? Or is it more difficult because you sort of already know, you know the hurdles and the obstacles and all the difficult things it takes? So I have an exercise that I do every day which answers that question. And there's a, there's a 
definition of wealth that you might have heard, well, I think we've all heard of, which is that uh, your wealth is like, you know, how, much, how, many, how many months of money do you have before it runs out? Yeah. Well, I actually do the other way around. It's like, well, if you lost everything, you know, how many days or weeks or months would it take to get it back to the same place? Um, and I use that as an exercise every day, which is if tomorrow I started with nothing, I had absolutely nothing, business taken away, everything was gone, what would I do? And always it's going to be something which would be an idea that I would have where I'd start from scratch. It would be connections that I would have that I would then call on to support me for the trust that I built over time. Um, it would actually make me want to really build those connections even more uh, and to do more for those around me to build goodwill. But the fundamental thing is as a result of that, I'm never really in any fear of losing everything because I always I really know there's this resourcefulness to start new things. And I think there's a truth in the world today, which is it's actually easier today to start a global business than a local one uh, and to make it and scale it very quickly. And I define a global business as one in which you can work from anywhere, you can learn from everywhere. Uh, and I'm constantly looking at, well, if I was to start something new from scratch, what would it look like? What would it be? And it's a really, it's a brilliant uh, thought exercise, uh, as well as it being a very freeing exercise as well. But as a result of that, I do believe today it's actually easier to start new things than ever. Um, and of course, when you start building trust, you start attracting many people who want to build new things. So as a result, we can then always, whatever idea we have, wait for the right team to form, uh, and then it can start up without it taking all of my time. Yeah. And then I get to experience all these different journeys taking place at the same time. What do you think is the next hot business category or maybe industry category that we're not thinking about? That You've talked to a lot of people big thought leaders, uh, all kinds of entrepreneurs all over the world. Where are we not focused right now that we should be? Sure. Uh, I would say rather than being a particular industry which might be emerging, it's more the disruptions happening in all the industries that could really transform. I mean, we're in a situation today where this idea of creating high growth is now easier than ever in even industries people wouldn't necessarily think about. So I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the people that I work with, an entrepreneur in England, his name is Anthony Chadwick, and he was a vet. And you think, well, like, what transformation can happen within the, within, within the vet industry? Uh, what he saw was that like, training could be upgraded, and he set up something called Webinar Vet, which basically was giving training online. He attracted thousands and thousands of uh, vets into this, pro in, and it's become a multi-million dollar business. Hmm. And then off the back of that, we were having a conversation recently about sensors. And you, know, you can have, you know, find my iPhone, but what about you know, find my dog, right? find my cat? And when we actually started sharing that, because he has all the vets out there already, as something which allows you to find the right vet in the area, be able to kind of take photos of your dog when they're feeling sick, uh, get that immediate uh, answer, and then at the same time, if there is uh, a dog that runs away, you've got through the collar and through the sensor a way to immediately find where they're at and to bring them back. When we actually went out with that kind of an idea, we found that there was all sorts of people within the community who were ready to jump on it and support it. And this is about like where we're going with things like uh, technology, the mobile side, the sensor side, the Internet of Things, 3D printing. Yeah. For, in most of these different cases, people are thinking of them as something far out there without realizing they're all coming very quickly. You know, when you look at uh, a company like Oculus, which was bought by Facebook. And they're uh, right here, just a few miles from us. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, what, what they do is incredible. The fact that they're bought for $2 billion is clearly uh, a vote from Facebook that they see the future being one, which because of the you know, amazing growth in data transfer will be a 3D world that we'll be living in. You know, when, I, when I visualize, for example, uh, um, the lighthouse, the Wolf Lighthouse within, within my uh, book, I'm actually visualizing it like a 3D world that you can kind of actually physically go into a virtual world, go to the right room, find the people there that are actually having exactly the same problem as you, the mentors that can help you, uh, and then get supported in that way. And maybe we're five years away from that, maybe we're 10, who knows. But if we're all thinking about what technologies are going to impact us in our, in our industry, I think we can see that pretty much every industry has that ability to be able to be reinvented and recreated. All right, we've been spending a little time with international entrepreneur and author of the book, Millionaire Master Plan, Roger James Hamilton. Roger, thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks very much for having me, Brian. It's been great. Behind the Brand features the people who are making things happen. Get the insight to grow your biz from experts who've done it. Get Behind the Brand.